grid down situation, if it would if it were to continue and not come back up, yeah, we'd be a third world country real quick because there's far too many people dependent on the system that would no longer be working, and those people would not know what to do, and it would turn into a tremendous amount of anarchy. I believe and that's a it's an unfortunate thing, but that's the society we have. We have a lot of people that depend on the government for a lot of things, and if all of a sudden the government is no longer functioning, you know, you can't go to the ATM, you know. Uh, there's going to be all these things. Well, what about, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do Because most of these people that have been on the government dole all their life, they don't know how to do anything else. Yeah. You know, they, they don't have a work ethic. I mean, if they've never had to work, how could they? Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's, it's and, and it's not just that. I mean, you've got your people that, that actually do work, and maybe they're not on public assistance, but all of a sudden their whole livelihood is wiped out. Yeah. Maybe their house is wiped out. Yeah. You know, if it's a natural disaster, what are, what are those? What's going to happen with those people? Yeah. Are, how far are they away from turning into something bad just because they don't have any other choice? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, you never, you never know how you're going to react when you're put into a culture like that that you've never been in before. You know, that's why uh, I wish a lot of these people that you know would say, uh, "Oh, we need this, we need that." I wish we could send them to places where they have that so they could find out what happens when you do have that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And, uh, because people just don't live in the reality of that kind of thing anymore. Yeah, I, I'm kind of under under the impression. I don't even want to say under the impression, but I'm like blown away um, at the level of Americans' inability to understand real poverty. And I'm not talking about American poverty because I think there's a, a huge difference between somebody who has to carry I mean, their water. The, the back most from impoverished home, in America yeah. would be considered well off by exactly. some people's terms. Exactly. So I think we're like when people in America are talking about these. these issues elsewhere as if it's the same they're they're extremely skewed they're not understanding what they're even talking about yeah they want to you know they want to compare our poor to the poor of you know of a third world country that has no chance at all like i said our poor people probably live better than most of the better people live in some of those places yeah i believe i've read statistics about that like the poorest of americans are Go that far, but but something along those well, lines. Well, I, I would qualify yeah. that by saying the poorest of Americans who are not on public assistance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people on public assistance live better than the poor. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. There's no doubt about that. I mean, cell phones. You know. I, mean, I don't know. I don't want to run the road. <laughs> yeah. Still. Yeah. It's a it's a known fact. I mean, you know, you can get a car, you can get you can get your rent paid. You know, where there's where there's a you know there's a struggling couple somewhere working two jobs to be able to do all that stuff. You know. Yeah. And because that's just how they do it yeah well it, it also brings me to an important point with like preparedness uh, a lot of times me as a prepper i get this weird like oh my god you're you're a doomsday for like you're this weird and i'm like no that's i'm trying to like change what people think of because i'm talking and, and what brought it up was you were just saying like what happens even if somebody loses their house and they don't have insurance or whatever whatever happens and all of a sudden they're literally on the street i mean in america that's oh, yeah, that's that a happens. pretty serious situation yeah, for, happens, for americans yeah. You know, that's stuff to be considering, and that's all part of preparedness. It's like a big part of the Caliber Club, too. It's not just this doomsday, get in your bunker stuff. It's I mean, No, and, and, you know, most of the people I've met in the, in, the, in the prepper community, it's not like that at all. I mean, everybody pictures the survivalist. Yeah, I always picture the gas mask. Yeah, the gas mask, and the guy's <laughs> yeah. got cases of fucking ammo piled up and yeah. a million guns. It's like, no, dude, you're going to have one rifle, probably a couple of magazines, <laughs> yeah. and a little bit of ammo supply. That's all you're going to have. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you'll be lucky if you have that. Yeah, you can be walking, too. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and I love the guys that say, well, I'm ready to go to war. It's like, you know, are you ready to be an insurgent? Because that's what you're going to be. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. The glorification part of it is 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 pretty ridiculous to me, especially if if you've ever spent any time seeing what that stuff really looks like. You know, I I have never been in the military, never been overseas in that capacity or anything. But I like a peaceful, law-abiding life. I do too. Um, we have, the problem is we don't, you know, the powers that be in this country don't care about laws anymore. Law, yeah. you know, we're are a nation of laws, but they just spend seem to spend more time trying to corrupt them than they do trying to force them. So it's uh, you know, we've we've wandered a long way away from what the founding fathers of this country designed. You know, everybody's you know I always hear the thing about how well they didn't picture all these machine guns back in the 1700s. Well, they didn't picture the internet back there. Are you gonna yeah. give that up too? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, that's this is the typical paradigm that people don't. 
they don't, you know, you, you want to use this argument for that, but put right. it on that yeah. and see if it makes the same sense. Yeah. Of course, it won't to you because you like your you like your yeah, social you media. Like your stuff. You, you like know? your internet. I can live without it because I live most of my life without the internet yeah. already. Yeah. You know? I, I don't need it. it. Yeah. It's fun. It's useful. Yeah. You know, I met a lot of good people. I met you because of yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, but you know, yeah, there's a lot of benefit to us. But you know what? Life was good before that too. You yeah. Know? And there's there's a big point to be made there because I get into the argument a lot of. People, people are coming at me about guns, and they're like, what are you talking about? What, how can you even take that position or whatever? And they want to take them away. And one of my arguments to them is always, look, you guys have never tried what I'm suggesting, which is keeping the family units together, which is keeping God and country involved. I mean, just keeping all this. You guys have obliterated the things that I find valuable that I think could remedy it, but yet you're telling me I have to give this up because you know that that's going to be Because you've thrown everything else out that's right. 